Hello out there. This is Eric Johnson, the brand. And Aaron Thigpen, the source. Guys, today's subject, are you fishing in the wrong pond? And what I mean by that is in recruitment, um, are you putting yourself in the in front of the wrong people? And and what I mean by that is, you know, athletes go to a lot of different showcases. They go to camps. They go to clinics. Uh, they go to all these different opportunities in which they're trying to get themselves recruited by these different schools, but are you really matching up with the school that you're getting in front of? For instance, you might be a football player, you're running back, and you maybe had a great season, you rushed for over a thousand yards, but you're 5'7", 145 pounds. Is it prudent for you to spend your time and money to go to a camp hosted by Alabama, whose backs tend to be 5'11", <laughs> feet 6'2", and 200 pounds. <clears throat> and also, again, are you fishing in the wrong pond? Are you going to events where you're just not the, either the technical or the physical match that these schools are looking for? And maybe you have unlimited resources and un unlimited time, but most athletes don't. And so I think you really want to be strategic about attending these events and picking these events and, and, and sourcing them out a lot more so that you know, hey, you know what? I do fit the model that these guys are looking for. Let me get in front of these schools. And, and it might be a reality check. It might be, hey, I don't fit the mold for D1 school. In that case, well, maybe you got work to do. In that case, maybe you say, hey, you know what? All right, I'll look for some NAIA or some D2 schools. But um, it's that's what I'd like to talk about. So EJ, what are your thoughts on this? You know, Aaron, back in the day in our generation, as they say, we have this term, keeping up with the Joneses. You know, and I I see a lot of athletes in all sports in, in this mentality. Not all the athletes, not all the parents, not all the athletes out there trying to play collegiate sports. But <clears throat> it seems many of them are looking at what their friends are doing. Oh, uh, he's going to this camp. I should go to that camp because I'm just as good as they are. And that mentality of keeping up with the Joneses doesn't allow you to flourish and, and find your your fit, as I always say, your fit to play um, at that at that university or college. And a lot of times, people don't understand that the sport is going to end one day. It's going to come to an end. And I think getting an education, understanding your goals of, of getting a job after you play a sport should be you know that's one of the things I'm sure you and I will talk about as we go through this podcast um, about uh, are you fishing in the wrong pond so those are my thoughts just keeping up the Joneses right now it's just something that uh, I see a lot of uh, in all sports with with athletes it, you know again I I really like to see kids succeed and I, I really like if they you know have a desire to move on to the next level I think they should have that opportunity Right. But I also think they need to go about it in a, in a more thoughtful way. And like you said, the shotgun approach doesn't work. And I think you're better kind of having some kind of laser focus in zeroing in on those, in other words, high probability targets. Right, I like know, that. If you've only got time to make four or five trips a year, mm -hmm. then they should be to high probability targets. Schools that are more likely to want your skill set academically, athletically, uh, those who are gonna want, those who are gonna want maybe your style of play, because you might be a great outside, outside linebacker, but maybe 
you only fit into certain schemes. Right. So again, why spend the time and money to go someplace where that's not what they do? For instance, we, we get um, baseball players. Okay. And the game constantly changes and evolves. And so you have different times where schools might be playing small ball. Right. And then they're playing power ball. And so you've got to recognize, you can't be behind the time and think, oh yeah, okay, you know, I'm a feed guy and I still bases and, you know, I, I hit choppers, whatever. And I want to go to uh, this exit school because that's what they play. But they may have had a change in coaching staff and right. change in philosophy. And now they're going for Powerball. Uh, I see that in softball. Right. Where you've got schools in the South, in the Midwest, who, you know, want these big, powerful girls. Right. Whereas on the West Coast, you know, you might see more <coughs> uh, speed-oriented teams. But if I know I've seen a couple, I've talked to a few girls who are now saying some of the West Coast teams are looking more for some of the power girls. So again, if you don't know that, and if you're not timing who you're trying to go to at the right time, and you're gonna miss out. In other words, you might say, okay, yeah, you know, UCLA, you know, they've, they've always had a lot of stoppers. And they may have had a change of heart, and now they're going to be big, powerful hitters. And you're gonna, are you gonna waste your time going to UCLA camp? So, you know, that's that's basically what I'm, I'm getting at. Aaron, I agree with you. Um, you know, don't you want your college experience to be great anyway? Yeah. Don't you want to find a, a place where, number one, that you're going to be happy and you're going to have the opportunity to play and impact that university, help that university win a conference title, hopefully help that university go to the World Series? I think that gets lost in a shuffle when you're you're fishing in the wrong pond. And I see a lot of athletes in all sports, you know, not understanding the importance of having a great college experience, getting a great education, enjoying the journey that, that's gotten them there, the hard work, the dedication to get into that, that experience that makes it enjoyable, makes it fun, makes great memories for the long run, rather than, oh, well, <clears throat> I, have to, I have to leave after a year because it just didn't work out with the coach. Or right. I, I, I sat on the bench for three and a half years and then I got cut my last year. What kind of you know experience is that for some of these student athletes? Right. They get, get in these situations <laughs> where that's difficult for them to understand. And I, and it goes back to, you know, being realistic about your ability. Yeah. Knowing what your ability is and knowing what your strengths are and your weaknesses are and trying to get better at those, but trying to really find out, does that university or college fit what I think I'd like to help this university be and what I am about? And I think, you know, if 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 people could just check their ego a little bit at the door and understand that, then it becomes a great experience. You and I have trained many athletes together in all sports that have done that, have had a a realistic approach to their recruiting, and it's been beneficial for them to to. To, and it really has helped. They, they come back and say, hey, man, I'm having a great time. I think of an athlete right now, you and I impacted Jack McCuller um, out of Los Lomas. And we, we worked with him quite a bit. And, uh, you know, he had admirate, you know, he had goals to go to a D1 program or go to a D3 program. And he could have went to the D1 program and, and, and been on the team and maybe played his junior, senior year where he could have went to this D3 program who really wanted him. The coaches really courted him and said, listen, we think you could be possibly a Hall of Fame player here. Why don't you come here? And there's that want and need. 
they wanted him, they needed him, and he went there. And he's had a great experience. He's happy all the time, comes back during the breaks, and I really enjoy it. I love my coaches. I love the environment I'm in, and this is what it's all about. So that's a good story where an athlete had an opportunity at D1 and D3 and chose the best fit for him. Right. No, I, I think that illustrates what we're, we're talking about. And um, <clears throat> I think, um, like you said, it's all about the experience in the end because the sports are going to end and you're going to go on with life. And you, you want to look back and say, hey, those are some good times. And we were competitive and we, we you know, we went for some championships and and that's all, that's really the most you can ask for, because for most of us, it doesn't end in big right. signing paychecks on, <laughs> on right, exactly. kid and all the rest of that. So um, I, I think having those eyes wide open and like you said, checking the ego right. and maybe even parents checking your ego <laughs> and, um, yes. and, and saying, hey, what really makes sense for this story to end well? Um, if the answer is, you know, no, then you've got to do some recalculating and you got to say, okay, what do I need to do to my body, to my game, to my play, so that I am this prototype for a D1 school or, or whatever the case may be. Right. And that might mean taking one step back to move two steps forward. So it might mean, I don't really say that, mean it as a derogatory thing, but right. maybe it might mean, you know what? Why don't I go to JC and develop? Because usually that's what it comes down to is right. athletes needing more development time. So maybe I go to JC for a year, develop, and then hopefully have more opportunities or at least higher quality opportunities. Coming off of that, off of that year or even two, mm -hmm. um, it, to get me to the place that I really desire. So, it's it's all about management. It's all about positioning. It's all about being aware of who you are, and and working with that. And you know, again, this whole recruiting thing, it can get really crazy. You can get caught up in, like you said, keeping up with the Joneses. You can get enamored with, hey, I got this letter from this school to come to this camp, and I got this letter from this team to go to this showcase, and I got this letter. Right. And I, I just want people to really filter out that this is still a business. And some of that you got to take with a grain of salt. And it's great to get noticed, and it's great to, to get those sorts of things, but you also got to say, well, hey, what's in my best interest? Yeah. Aaron, you couldn't have said it any better. <clears throat> and, you know, that really wraps up what we want to talk about today. And um, are you fishing in the wrong pond? And so remember out there, people, remember the brand and the source. Um, this is Coach Eric Johnson. And this is Coach Aaron Thigpen. Uh, again, want to talk to you guys real quick about um, our series coming up, Champions Are Built. Uh, stay tuned for it. It's going to be, be a very good series. We're going to have some guest speakers on there. They're going to talk a lot about um, becoming champions, failures, successes, uh, all the trial and tribulations, very intriguing stories, good stuff. So stay tuned. You guys can also catch us at uh, our websites, EJ Sports and uh, Gamespeed.net. So we'll see you soon. Bye.